Yes, because of Betty and I know Sue Wolf and uh, many are starting to bring this back. So, Betty, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, oh. See you, nigga. Uh, like she said, twenty has been around for a long time. Let's say about four thousand years. And twining was a way to make clothing, and it was also a way to make uh, baskets and things to, you know, before baskets came along, twining was there. And twining, they couldn't go to Walmart like we do, get our supplies or Hobby Lobby, but they had to make their cordage, just like you would make rope from the inside of, a, from the inner bark of a mulberry tree, or they would use dog bane, which dog bane is used for several other things too, but they would make cordage out of uh, plant fibers. And the um, way that they would make their looms, of course they didn't make them like this, their looms were made out of saplings. They, were, they would stick them in the ground just as uh, far apart as they wanted, depending on the size bag they wanted to <coughs> make. So they would stick them in the ground and they would set which is similar to what the loom is, how the loom is made, but not quite as big. But um, those, like I said, it's been around 4,000 years. It was um, a lot of stuff has been found in caves in Tennessee and Georgia. Because um, I think uh, Eastern Band, Miss Cherokee, had a twine skirt made to wear one year. And ever since then, yeah, and ever since then, uh, twining has come back. I think Oklahoma Cherokees have started twining before the Eastern Band because I found out while I was in DC they were just now learning how to twine and so uh, a lot of the twine bags that I showed up there uh, they were really interested in them in fact I sold one huge bag that I made it's not really huge but a bigger bag than I usually make I sold it to um, Bo Taylor who is the speaker and the leader of the Aniga Dua Warriors and he come along looking at my table he looked at it. It wasn't quite finished. It needed a strap. And he said, you finish that, I'll buy it. First, he tried it out. He put his drum in. He put his gourd rattler, uh, the rattler in. And he put something else in there. And he says, that'll work. You finish it, I'll buy it. So I finished it. Went back to my room. I was working like crazy. But um, I'll have a picture of that up pretty soon here. But uh, twining. Uh, like I said, it's a very old form of weaving. It's really very easy. Um, well, I'll take it back. Depends on your ability. <laughs> Depends on your ability. Uh, I first saw the twine bags from uh, Noel Grayson and Lisa Rutherford. And Noel always carried a twine bag, and I kept thinking, I want to learn how to do that. And so when I was working in the ancient village, is where I actually learned how to do this um, from Lisa and Noel. In fact, this is the very loom that Lisa provided me. She told me to keep it. I've kept it and I've made lots of bags with it. And uh, what you need to start with when you start twining is find you somebody that has a drill. Drill holes. This one has four holes because I can make different sizes on here. This is a bag uh, that's a small bag. And I made this one on the larger one right here. So if you make it adjustable, you can you have better use of one loom. Uh, the larger bag that I was talking about was made on this loom. And like I said, if you have somebody that can that has a drill, a saw, these are just dowel rods. I just took one, split it in half, and this also is adjustable. I can make a smaller one, can make one in between. So it's very versatile. All the looms that we have are very versatile. And most of the material, I don't make my own cordage, although I'd love to learn. Um, we use, this is hemp, and I'll pass some of this stuff around so you can actually look at it. Uh, the hemp and jute, most of the bags are made from hemp and jute. In both of them, you can dye. You can use your writ dye, or you can use the traditional dyes. I use, this is walnut, and this is bow dart. And usually when I find somebody, one of the guys that I know that makes bows, I said, I always tell them I want the shavings. It makes a beautiful dye. This is a natural dye, and this is a natural dye. 
And like I said, you can use your writ dyes. This is uh, the hemp dyed in black. And this is the jute dyed in red. So you can come up with all kinds of colors. Have a green here. But to get started, like I said, you need your boards, you need your dowel rods, and you'll string it up, just like you see here. I'll pass this one around. This is what I'm working on right now. This one goes to North Carolina also. This young lady I met at DC, she did woodwork. And she gave me this piece uh, that has the seven clans on it. And so she wants me to put that piece on her bag. And she wanted it in black, so I dyed everything black uh, that I needed. But I'll pass this around. You can look at the loom. You can look at and see how it's uh, put on there. To start with, you will start with um, the loom. I always take, go around twice. And then the rest of them, you just cut as long as you want, depending on how long the bag is going to be. Like this one right here, the bag could be so long. You could tie it off or you could weave down a little bit further. But there, most of the bags back then were made with the open face weave. And be, that's because uh, they had to make their own cordage. So the open face weave is like the top part of that that's going around right now. You see that top part? That's the open face weave. You can do it two different ways. You can uh, make V's. And take every other one from this side, one from this side, and make a V and twine it. And twining is actually like two that are hanging down. And then your weaver comes in like this. And then you twist uh, one over the other and bring two more in. And that's the way it's done. That's the cl uh, closed weave like this one. Most of these are closed weave. This one has open face weave on top. I don't know if you can tell it, but I'll pass that around too. Keeping Donnie busy here. <laughs> and this one, oh, let me talk about that. This one is uh, called, this one's a little bit different. I used two different colors, the natural and the red that was dyed. And what it is, to bring up the red, I double twist it and pull tight. And that makes the diamonds on there. You can do any kind, you can do a basket weave on here. You can make any kind of shape that you want on here, mostly diamonds. But I have a challenge from the Eastern Band, which I'll show you pretty soon, uh, in one of the pictures that I feverishly got off my phone <laughs> today. <laughs> Went to Walmart and said, gotta go to Walmart, we gotta go to Walmart, gotta go do. But anyway, uh, the straps, I usually just braid them, but you can twine them also. And I've got, I thought I had two, but this is a braided strap, which I attach to the bags. And when I teach uh, twining, I usually get, this is from a, a young lady that I taught when I was working at the ancient village. This is a different type of, this is a cotton type. And you can use anything to twine with, like the bag, the black bag that's going around. That's a cotton, uh, a cotton type material. It's got a filling on the inside. If you noticed, it felt different. Uh, my son and I buy th bought those at, um, I can't remember if it was Hobby Lobby, but he, he bought his so he could make stick balls out of his. It didn't work out for him, so I got all of it, so it's mine. So that's what I came up with. And like I said, you can use any kind of fiber to do that. And um, I'll give you a little history on the bags. They were officially made for the men. They were, the women would weave these bags for their men. And I know lots of people say they carried purses. They weren't called purses. Um, they would carry their tools, their hunting tools. So if they lost a uh, point, they had all the tools in their bag. <coughs> to just sit, grab some rock, make another point, attach it, and keep on their hunt so they didn't have to come home empty-handed. So you know the wife wasn't going to be happy if he came <laughs> home empty-handed. So <coughs> this one was given to me by Sue. This is a small one. I actually put a small cell phone in it. But I love gifts when, I, when we teach 
also in basketry when I teach I tell people pass it on and like I said we've been doing this for quite a uh, about, I'm gonna say about five years at least and the Eastern Bay just now started and they were they're getting tips from us and I'm like I love it <laughs> but they were um, in DC they were at the table they were looking at every bag and how I done it and asking all kinds of questions which is really pretty neat Any questions so far? No questions? Okay, hurry up and eat your sandwich. No. <laughs> okay, this bag here was one of the first bags that I actually made. Um, we were in red clay. This gentleman that's wearing the bag um, bought it from me and he said it was going into a museum in Tennessee. This bag is um, one of the bags, one of the first bags also that I made, and it has a flap on it, which was my first time to make a flap, and has a deer button on it to close it with, and those are all the natural colors, the walnut and the uh, bodark that's going around. This one was uh, made for my sister. She said, I want a bag that I can put my billfold and my phone in, she was going to Vegas, so she could strap that bag on and just carry her, what she needed was her billfold and her cell phone. And that one's in purple. She loves purple. You know, I usually make bags for people. Like this one was made for Brandon, works at the Ancient Village. I think I made a bag for all the guys there when I was working. This one um, was made for Brandon Bush. It also has a deer antler button on it. And what he does with his, he carries the stick balls in it because he's also a stick ball maker. This one was made for, uh, actually, I just made this one. But there's a guy that uh, works with uh, Donnie. His name is Brad Wagnon. He bought this one for his wife. Uh, and he's had it for like three years now. And he said, she won't use it. She won't carry it. <laughs> and I asked him, to, last time I saw him, he said, yeah, she's got it hanging in the closet. But this, was the, this is the one Brad's got. Back to that one. This one is uh, in Williamsburg. I did some living history in Williamsburg. And the young man right there is, uh, he was going around, crying around. Everybody's got a bag but me. And um, I started making that bag while I was sitting there. And I thought, I'll just give it to him. And I, I worked real fast because we were there for, well, quite a while, but I didn't really get to work on the bag. And he is, uh, his reservation is like 30 minutes from Williamsburg. And uh, the last day I was working very fast, trying to fix the strap so I could put it on. And about five o'clock they said, this, it's over, it's it, you know. And I finished it. Everybody knew that he was going to get the bag. But when, I, when it was over, I just walked over and put it over his shoulder. He said, this is for me? I said, yeah, I made it for you. He said, uh, thank you. And I made it in blue. And um, I did a lot of open face weave on that one. So to be more traditional. And the Cherokees were the only ones, uh, only tribe that have uh, twining. Uh, you can go through, you can go on the internet and find all kinds of stuff. I found some museums uh, that had a lot of twining uh, um, using different fibers. The ones that really were beautiful that I had never seen before were um, on, in the West. They were like, they call, they call them plateau bags. They were made out of corn husks. And I would like to learn how to make those. And they put really intricate designs in them. That's him again. And this is me. <laughs> this was in D.C. I have all my stuff sitting there. And um, D.C. is always a fun trip. You get, I get to educate a lot of people on tricky history, basketry, twining. This is the one I was talking about. This is the one that was bought by Bo Taylor. has all the natural colors in it. And uh, I worked real quick. In, put on the strap and then he comes by 
he says, I gotta leave, I gotta leave, do you have it finished? I said, yeah, just to, uh, I have it finished. He said, but I gotta leave. And he, he paid it, and he said, give it to one of the other warriors, which I did. But uh, he, uh, he, I hear he uses it all the time because I, I communicate with some of the warriors. And um, I have orders from, there's uh, Michael Crow, one of the warriors, carrying the bag. He told me to give it to Michael. So Michael was acting like it was his. Okay, it's not going now. There it goes, but it went. Yeah, wrong way. I guess that's all of them, but I know I had picked out one. Uh, like I said, I was challenged um, to make one for Sonny. Sonny is one of the warriors. And each one of the warriors have tattoos on their arms. And they earn them. They're stacked, which I did not know. And I, like I said, I learn something new every day. But their tattoos are stacked. And his, one of the tattoos that he wants me to put on his bag was on his right arm. And it comes to a point and it's red and black. He said, I want you to put this on my bag. So that's my challenge. I've not started making that one yet. The other challenge was from the other one, uh, Michael Crow. He wants me to make one for him in black and red also because the, the, those are warrior colors. And uh, when I get those done, I usually don't post anything online, which, I, you know, uh, it's just not, I sent one to um, Virginia a couple of days ago, and it was beautiful. I wanted to keep it, but usually when I want to keep something, somebody, so. And this one was also uh, not finished when I was in D.C. Uh, this young man come up and said he was working on a turkey regalia. He was turkey and something else, but he wanted a turkey regalia, working on a turkey regalia. And this was blue, navy blue, and it was made in hemp and it had a flap on it. It was a nice picture. I mean, nice, uh, but I didn't take a picture of it. So when I mailed it to him, I sent a note and it said, thank you for your order, and please take a picture and send it to me. Um, some people said, you should have put beads on it, but no, beads weren't around at this time. So I like to keep things traditional. That's my favorite thing, it's traditional. I th other things are beautiful, but my thing is really actually being traditional. So, um, any questions so far? Yes? I was wondering, I've heard of bandoliers. Bandoliers are made out of wool. wool? Uh huh, those are different. Uh, bandoliers are also for the men. And uh, the women carry them now, just like they carry the twine bags. But uh, they're made out of wool ba um, back in the 1700s, 1800s, 1800s. When they started uh, trading, they were getting wool blankets and they started using the wool blankets for clothing. The wool skirts came in and the wool uh, leggings and the breech cloth. They would take the leftover blankets and make a bag and those were the bandolier bags. Then they started um, doing ornament, uh, ornamentation, beads and stuff like that on there. Yeah. 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 And uh, they used a lot of silk ribbon, just like the wool skirts. And uh, the more silk you put on your skirts, the more your man got a lot of deer. <laughs> they uh, they would trade all their deer skins for different things like copper pots, uh, things that they needed. Um, you know, before they were cooking in uh, pottery. And then they would start training for, for copper pots, uh, trade shirts. The women wore trade shirts. They were men's shirts, but they were, you know, that's why you see a lot of them that are long, that are made now. But uh, when the deer trades came in, they trade, their lifestyle changed, their clothing changed. There was a lot, a lot of changes during that time. Yeah. Because you would have seen like a mixed life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would think that people in the lower towns 
got started the transition before the people in the upper towns but it all happened but most of the deer hunters i would think were up in the mountains and where they had to come down and do their trading and a lot of the trading started in the 1600s you know um, wool blankets and like all kinds of stuff utensils things that they never seen before that were wooden at the time became metal any other questions? After you put your sticks together, how do you get started? Okay, um, get your dowel rods. And depending on what size you want to make, this is the bigger one here. I've got one. Anybody ever do macrame? Macrame? You know what a lark's head is. Okay, that's how they're attached. They're attached. Um, I'm going to take this one off. And like any other thing, I know I'm a teacher, but I don't measure anything. It was <laughs> one of the things that I just, you know, I don't measure. But anyway, there, you just cut however many you want to, uh, you think it's going to cover the whole thing. The first thing you do, whoops, way to go is attach where you're going to tie your lark's head. And I usually go around twice and then tie it off and then attach, start attaching the lark's heads all the way around. And uh, sometimes, like I said, I don't count. Sometimes you can put them close together. just depends on, yeah, that's right. Uh, or about a quarter inch or less apart but if when you are attaching I'll, I'll put this on and I'll pass it around but the lark's heads and when you start weaving you get all the lark's heads on it's you attach your weaver and uh, you start the process of twining which I said you'll take two and your weaver will go around the two and you will start crossing. It'll, here's your two, here's your weaver, and you will bring one over the other and grab two more and do the same thing all the way around. And it, it's really, 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 if you, uh, a tight weave. This one started right here. This is where the lark's heads are attached. This is your weaver here. And to bring that out. When I said cross, one goes over the other. You grab two, push it up, grab the next two, and continue that all the way around. Like I said, you can do the open face weave, which is a lot faster, which is you'll start weaving about here, or you can do the V's, which goes like this every other every two and it makes it strong if you do the closed weave but the open face weave is more of a traditional weave but you can try it well, it's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard you want to try not really but you'll try okay what you do is you got this and cross one over and you can put it between these two and pull it up tight like that. So it's kind of like lady, really. Yeah, it just goes. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to get a good view. Well, I don't know if I'm doing it right. Don't be getting too good view. <laughs> that one over. When you cross them, you put bring the next two. It's just mm -hmm. but that's it's really really easy once you get the hang of it, and you can start putting designs on it. Depending on how many 
you put on there. Sometimes you can make a diagonal you know, design when you put your color in it. But you can also do it if you have an even number, which you'll just have to double twist your color, just like the diamonds I was talking about that has the red and the natural color. And I'll just do a double twist and pull tight and make the color come up. That's how you get the diamonds on the red. The idea of basket designs and uh, some of the designs look like um, <coughs> the wampa mills. Uh huh. Yeah. Cool. Like I said, you can put any kind of design on there. Basket weave. I'm a basket maker, and you can. I've we have put um, the un, unbroken friendship on there, and it's uh, beautiful. Of course, to me, all basket <laughs> basket uh, patterns are beautiful. But that's one of my favorite ones, and you can do that. You can put, uh, you can start here in the middle and do the same thing and just go back and forth and make your diamond also. Then you'll actually, when you get to up here, you can start attaching that to the diamond that you made here. Just start out with one color. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. Okay, it's right here. And the beauty of these, you can turn these while you're weaving. Which some, you know, if you don't want to turn it all the way around and start weaving again. But when you do this, you can just keep weaving. Get it to where it goes all the way to the end. And then start weaving again. So what you're doing is just tying, tying this one, these two pieces first. To start uh -huh, these two pieces will hold these up. Just put these over and, and make uh -huh. a little loop in there. Yeah, that's what was uh, See, lark's I'm, head. I'm, I'm, yeah, lark's, that's I what they call the lark's head. head. Okay. okay, this is the lark's head. And you're okay. attaching them to this top, the beginning. And then you and, start going horizontal with uh -huh. them. Uh-huh. And I know there's, uh, for weavers, there's a warp and there's a weft. And me it took me a while to figure out okay this is the warp going down and this is the weft oh, oh, and the okay. easy way to remember is you weave to the weft <laughs> 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 instead of white you go to the weft <laughs> but when you grab two you're going to bring it over this one and you're going to grab two of these and you're going to push it up okay come over grab two push it up like that. Oh, okay. I know this one. Good and tight. And yeah, this one is a. This one I put on the original loom. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit tighter than yeah. what this one is. But what you can do on these also, if it's a little bit big, I just take a piece of this and tie it in the hole, and it tightens up. There's just you all just, kinds of. You need one of those like lazy Susans right here, where these things fit in. Where you <laughs> <laughs> Good <laughs> idea. Like Good idea. Good idea. You know, Betty, just looking at this, it seems doable, mm -hmm. and I don't always say that. Uh, like just even the the loom. I don't mm -hmm. know what you call it, loom. Yeah, we we'll call it loom. Looks like somebody could make that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> oh, we did. Yeah. And, uh, we did. That's, and, that looks pretty easy. And then this the, is the hard part. Yeah, and the, the yarns are mm. fairly easy to uh -huh. get now. Yeah, too. they are. The, um, <coughs> I use, this is jute, and the other is hemp. Yeah. And Do as far as... you have a teaching class on, on YouTube or anything? No, no. You need that has to do it between, between now and uh, time school starts. <laughs> we have hey, a month. Well, we have a month. We have, yeah, we have a month. Uh, <laughs> but it is, it's doable. It's mm -hmm. very, uh, you just have to take your time until you get that technique down. So if you had a teaching class, you could take these to the different communities. Mm -hmm. and just, just plug that little CD in and there you go. You got a whole meeting right there. Yeah. <laughs> Can we make that, Donnie? Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, and it's, it seems like something, I mean, people would be proud. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, teenagers yeah. making yeah. these kinds of things. And really it's handy. It's usable. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's very usable yeah. and it's very durable. Um, the hemp, when you dye, you have to kind of boil the hemp mm -hmm. because it's plastic kind of coated and you have to boil it for a little bit and then turn and take the water out of it and put more water in it and then put your dye in. 
because it doesn't take the dye. Now this okay. jute will take just the like dye. dye mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just the jute any the dye any dye. any color, any color you like, you can make. And then when you dry it, you just lay it out. On yeah, it. I do. I just lay it out. I'm just it may be all tangled up, but I'm just laid out. And when it gets completely dry, I just find the end and I'll start rolling it to a ball like those like that pass around. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Very nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Say you might, these are weavers. Those are weavers. Those are weavers. You don't want to see? I like it, but I can't do it. So. Oh, now. I once had a teacher said, can't, can't do oh, anything. Oh, I know, and I was a teacher. See, I knew that. <laughs> that. That's true, but I'm not doing this it. is your weavers. And what you do is you just start out just like this right here. This one goes over, and then you grab the two, and you just pull it tight. And do the same thing again. Pull the next two, pull it up, and just go. Continue that all the way around. <coughs> and with the open face, like I said, it will. You'll start. Just go around. It's just kind of like gradual, and it goes all the way around, like the blue one. It's gradual, and then you can also do the V's. You'll take one from each, and do V's, and then. Right. This will have to be this one, and this one will be these two here, and make V's, uh -huh. and that's the open face weave, and that's the way most of the bags were made to begin with, because of the cordage, you know, they had to make their cordage, and depending on how much cordage they had, and that's how, why the open face weave. Uh -huh. Had to be sparing with it. Uh-huh. Yes. How do you, what do you do for the very first? Do you just string okay, it I string it up around. I usually use it twice. I string it around twice okay, and then it tie just, it off. But it just goes around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just goes completely okay. around. And then this is just looped and back through Yeah, itself. this is uh, called lark's head. Yeah, you just loop it uh -huh. back through itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of like a single crochet. I don't crochet, but... <laughs> well, it is because you just loop it through Yeah. It. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then after that is when you start your... Start your uh, weaver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is what that? we do. Okay, let me move these over a little bit so you can see. Okay, now these, these are your you weavers. When you put these on there, though, do you put them on tight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, All you the put them on around. tight. Mm -hmm. Very tight. And you just take these. It starts out with one like this, and you take one over the other and grab two. And you're on the, you're on the back side of me. Okay, let me. Okay. Okay. That's what we do. See, you got two. It goes over that one. And then you're going to grab two and grab, get those two together, and push it up tight. And two more, grab these two, push it up tight. So you do two over two every time? Mm-hmm, two, because this is, yeah, because this is two. See this? Yeah. You grab two, and then you push it up. But now then, after you do that, you, do, you only have one. Or do, no, you no. have two. Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. it come <coughs> over and pull it up. And this will go, I'll have these all the way around. Yeah. And you can, like I said, you can take this and you can turn it like this. Or you can turn the whole thing. But this is the way. So you just work with it on your lap? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. see this. Yeah, it's on my lap. <laughs> I don't think I can make much. But oh, yeah. I'm getting excited. Yeah, you can. Oh, Donnie, we're going to teach you how oh, to do yeah. this. Oh, oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do it. Well, like I said, when these, some of these are just a little bit big, you can take a piece of what you're working with and tie it right here and make it tighter. So you could do the same thing with what we call now binder twine. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find something to do with my hands. That would work. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. Hey, she can just let me know and we'll work with you. She, like she can embroidery the most beautiful embroidery you ever saw. Oh, wow. I, guess this I love these bags. Thank you. This is, it's easy once you get started. It's, it's addictive, right? <laughs> Sue couldn't put it down for a while when she got started. <laughs> it's addictive. Yeah, it's addictive.
Any questions? Any more questions? No more questions? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Not very many. <laughs> um, I use uh, the jute and the hemp. Use, uh huh. Yeah, you could use just like this bag I was talking about. This is a cotton material, and it's got a inside filling, but you can, you know. This, these were already colored. I didn't have to, no dye. You know, my hands weren't black and blue. I don't, you, I don't wear gloves when I dye stuff. <laughs> I just, but yeah. See, this is the open face weave. This is closed. All this is closed. But see, this is, this isn't hard on your hands either, you know. You tie them off. Tie them off. Um, sometimes when they get a little bit too, um, crowded I'll take a crochet needle and pull them through cut them off where you can't see them and then I'll tie the two that's left because that's if they're that's, your that's that's my extent of crochet <laughs> but at least I use a crochet needle but uh, yeah the, I think I'm gonna have to do that with this one because I was sitting uh, the other night trying to tie it off and it was too crowded which kind of made it go out this way and I want them to hang down you know <coughs> Yeah, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Wider. And like this one, it's wide enough for a cell phone, small wallet. You could. There is a bag, um, where did I see? But there's a bag made strictly with dog bane. Like I said, dog bane is a very traditional. There's a, a dog bane bag, I think it's in Williamsburg. It's made all dog bane. And I told him, I said, I want to do that. <laughs> All dog bane. Because dog bane is used for tying arrows onto the shafts. And I know, know Grayson does that. And I know when he sees dog bane, he stops the car and goes after it. <laughs> and, it and rocks, too. He sees a rock. I know he, I know he goes after it. Mm -hmm. you, you could do more traditional now, if you want to do more uh, contemporary yeah and this is more what I call contemporary yeah. you know using a different type of material and like I said you can use yarn you can use yarn um, like the material that uh, like this uh, where do you go this one this one I think is uh, is that cotton Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use different kinds of material, whatever you're comfortable with. I would, you know, I would try. And the only reason I use this, like I said, my son and I bought it at the same time, and he couldn't use his for making balls for stick ball. But it worked out good for me. <laughs> yeah, I was. Now, this is the open face weave. This is the uh, V's that I was talking about. See the V's? Um, you start weaving them, you will take a, um, let me do this. I usually get a long piece. Cut a long piece like this. And this is where I would just take your loop and put it in. And this is where you start. Oh, You're over. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, around two. Okay. It's going to be all, it's going to be around two all the way around. All the way around. Mm -hmm. okay. all the way around. And see the beginning. She was asking, so okay. you just take your two, pull it through, and then you start your weaving over. Pull it up. Just like that, all the way around. like that.
And like I said, you can put this in your lap. I sit in a chair and for some reason I'll put this while I'm sitting like this so I can weave, you know. It's just like, uh, I'm going to do this. I'll go like this. And so I'm comfortable weaving this way. Just like that. And then you get so far, you can just turn this, the whole thing. Or, like I said, you can start to weave all the way to the corner and then turn the whole thing and keep weaving. We have several uh, watching from the Eastern Band now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'll be hearing about it. Does anybody watching have a question? A comment? No. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? The open part up there, you just kind of drop down. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you do is start out at the top, and then if you decide you wanted to uh, make the open weave, you just gradually start dropping down, and that's the way it'll go all the way around. And then when you end it, you do the same thing, just gradually, and then start weaving the uh, closed. Okay. So it's kind of like a glass thing where it looks like an imperfection. It's perfect. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, yeah. because glass has those little imperfections that you want. Uh -huh. And so somebody would say, look, that didn't work right, but it's perfect. Yeah, because with this, where it starts right here, you can take it off and position the bag. And get this one. You can take this. You can see where you can add it right here, yeah. maybe like an imperfection. You can actually take this bag and work it this way, and then your strap will be here, and it'll come down this way too. And that's the beauty of it. If you uh, find, if you you know, if you start start uh, one color, <coughs> it's always in one spot. So if you keep that one spot going, like I said, you can cover it by putting your so you strap and it. uh huh same spot so you can put your strap on both sides and it'll be covered I've got a question online from Valerie Kagan uh, she wants to know how you attach handles um, the straps yes. the straps um, I use a here's the handle over here. okay what I do is like this one is finished I will take a tapestry needle and I'll go from the inside using the same color and I'll go inside and pull the needle through and go on the other side and pull the needle through and this makes a stronger strap. I know the, lot of, uh, the older ones would make them start their strap right here which to me was, wasn't strong enough. And by attaching it down here with a tapestry needle, it makes it stronger because it's, it's a, um, of course, there's a lot more weaving, I mean, braiding to do to make it fit that way. Yeah. That was a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. And there's another one. How do you introduce another color to make a pattern within another color? Um, that's a good Summer. one. The, uh, this one, for instance, we just, I just add another color, just the same way you add it to start, you know, the, uh, the two, I just started, like right here, you can see where I started, I just added that to start the open face, but you can always see where it's start and stop, in different places, if you really look, you can see. <laughs> but if you're not looking, you don't really, you know, really see it. But that also shows that it's homemade. Handmade. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, definitely handmade. And it, could, it really kind of adds to the design, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it drops in the other color, and you can see. Mm -hmm. that you can't really see this when you're using the hemp or the jute, but I know I've noticed on this one that you really could. Okay. But like I said, un unless you're looking for it, you really don't see it, and you can just... So yarns, what you have here, Betty, are just different 
thicknesses um, so you can really just use like this is a really thick mm -hmm. this is a really really yeah. thick it's a cotton but it's okay. got a filler on the inside and it is really oh, thick okay. and it it's actually easy to weave with this was uh, took no time okay. once I started but you can see where I started and stopped if you like I said just but okay. you don't see that as much on the hemp and then you've got some twine there that's real thin too so mm -hmm. you can just kind of work with whatever. yeah whatever if you want to stay traditional more traditional use the jute okay. and the hemp okay are there any others other you said dog bane but dog bane uh, um, any other material um dog bane i have not tried but i want to mm -hmm. um I've not tried anything like the inner bark or the mulberry, what our people used to use before. Yeah. And but I do uh, know how to make the cordage. I have uh, worked with uh, Matt. Matt has made a lot of cordage. Um, but I would like to try that. I really would. I, I want to do things as traditional as I can. Yeah. Matt Anderson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he used to make cordage when I was working at the village. Yeah, he used different plant fibers. Yes. And it, it's really very strong after you get it together. You wouldn't think so, but it's really oh. strong. Okay. And that's what the bags were made of. Okay. I'll check that out. Uh, Any other questions? When you, when you do this, this is all one piece. When you get ready to put another color, do you just start another color? Yeah, that's basically. <laughs> that's what we were talking about. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. It's easy to see on this one where the color was started, whereas in the hemp and the jute, it's kind of hard. But, um, yeah, this is easy. So, mm -hmm. like right here, you can see where I added the brown. And also back here when I started the blue again. Uh -huh. It's easy to see on this one that this one uh, was made by a young lady that I taught. She's the one that made that one. Yeah, this is, now you do this all one piece and then you just overtack this on the handle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like um I had a question uh while ago how to attach the handle. Just braid the strap and attach it on using a tapestry needle, using the same kind of material. I'll start at the bottom here, come through and then go through this way. I just kinda go back and forth and I actually kinda stay along with the braid through here till I get up to here and then right here is where I really try to attach it on a little bit tighter and do the same thing on the other side and before the old bags that I've seen uh, even I think Noel does it he'll attach it right here which to me was not very strong but his is so I started attaching mine all the way down Yeah, I like them this way because it, to me they stay attached a lot better. But you have to do a <coughs> lot more weaving or a lot more. Um, you could also twine the straps too and attach them like that. It is, I love it. Ooh. Give it here then. <laughs> Give it here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go ask Linda. <laughs> Is there any more questions or anything? Uh, yes, she did. She made this one right here. This is one Sue made. And she gifted it to me which I'm very proud of. I don't really. See, she attached it just like I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's good. Oh, Sue does a lot of things. Question. Yes. The, uh, is there an appropriate place to wear it? Because I know the handles have to be a little longer. Well, to the straps have to the be a little longer. Today, we make the straps longer. But um, the man used to wear them about right here. It was just a small strap, and they would wear them right here. Yeah, was right around here. Easily yeah, uh huh. It was right about here. They, they were very short. Okay. And uh, yeah, 
about like that one. But today I usually make them to where they'll hang about right here, more modern. <laughs> I mean, is it just the size you want to make? Or? Yeah, it's the size you want to make. Uh, this one, um, you can make, like I said, two or three different sizes. Oh, okay. okay. So, cool. the holes. Uh, like I said, they're very versatile in size. Mm -hmm. This one right here is the same size as the black that I have right there. And, like, Dale rods, they're easy to make. If you know somebody has a drill and drill holes, <coughs> They'll last forever. Yeah. Is that blue tape on top? Yeah, that's blue tape. That's to keep it from splintering, you know. Um, that's actually where you X marks the spot and you put your drill there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, I mean, yeah. yeah. What's the string for? The string is, like I said, if it gets a little, if your dowel rod's a little bit big or the hole's just a little bit big, you can put the string in it and it'll tighten it up. Somebody yeah. said they hope you have some at the holiday for sale. Robin McLean Smith. <laughs> Robin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> Hi, Robin. She's from Anaheim. Uh, yeah, if I, yeah, if I could actually do some of this stuff more than what I do, um, I would sit and do nothing but this and baskets. I mean, that's my, my first love is baskets. And, like, um, we... The treasures, are we treasures, we're versatile. We do other things too. And this is more like my second love. You know, I like to do this because it's relaxing. Just like basket making, it's very relaxing to me. And <laughs> I've seen a lot of people in basket class that get frustrated. I'll tell you a story about my sister if you don't tell her. No. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. Oh, she, she won't watch it. Anyway, uh, when I taught uh, my sister how to make bas flat reed, Flat reed's a little, little bit more difficult than the double wall baskets, you know. And well, I taught her, and she got frustrated. She has no patience at all. <laughs> she looked at it, and she couldn't bring it up. And after a while, I seen it flying across the room. <laughs> 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 but she did. She actually, she did come back and learn. She took a break, and so she come back, and, and she actually brought it up. And she, she can make she can make the flat reed baskets. I taught her uh, the round reed and the flat reed, but she's never tried twining. I don't know why, but she just hasn't tried it. She said she wanted to learn, but she hasn't come to see me yet. And so, <coughs> But my grandkids, they like, um, when uh, most of them were living close to me, We'd have a day where I'd bring out the white table, and it's, all right, it's craft day at Memo's house. And well, they'd all come in. We made baskets. We made corn husk dolls. We made uh, all kinds of things just sitting around all day on the weekend, and they loved it. My oldest son got first place in Ader County for his uh, flat reed basket. Ader County. No, it was in Fort Smith. He got first place. So I'm trying to keep it going. And that's my favorite thing is teaching, educating people about baskets, twining, um, language. That's yeah. my first love, language. Um, trying to keep it going. Trying to get my, um, I had a, have a new grandbaby and my son, BJ, says, talk to her in Cherokee. So when I do have her, I do talk to her in Cherokee. Yeah, and Betty, I didn't point out earlier when I was introducing you, you're one of not very many that have gotten the, the Degree in Cherokee. Cherokee language. studies and Cherokee, Cherokee language studies, studies yeah. At NSU. Yeah. So, yeah, bachelor's yeah. degree in education, Cherokee studies. And she uses it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're close to seven, but if there are five, eight, oh, we're oh. five over. Oh, my gosh. So it's on track. <laughs> but, uh, okay then. <laughs> well, what don't, Nagat? What don't, Betty? What don't?